Hello and welcome to People's Voice, where true stories touch deep emotions. Today, we delve into, I discovered my wife's cheating using GPS tracker. Come, let's explore these real life stories. We got married at 19 after dating for a year. She is the first and only woman I have dated, kissed, hugged, and had intimate relations with. I think this is part of why I am struggling so much with what happened. She is my first and only romantic love. In 22 years, I have always been faithful and never even had a flirty conversation with another woman. This may be why it is tormenting me so much. The worst thing that has happened to me in my life, absolutely devastating, overall, even harder to deal with than the untimely passing of my mother 10 years ago. Betrayal is a beast. In the last three years, I've noticed some odd behavior changes in her. A year and a half ago, the first incident was texting someone she met at work, doing retail sales, and they started communicating by setting up special sales events for the company the guy worked for. She became very protective and defensive of her phone. I ended up finding the texts, 1,600 texts over a nine-month period. It was mostly about setting up sales events, but started getting into things like recommending places to eat, sharing vacation pictures, etc. She admitted to initially eating dinner with him once. There was another lady who was going but canceled, so the two of them met anyway. From the evidence I gathered from her phone, I did not see any blatant sexual texting, but there were some inappropriate and flirty messages. I tracked her car through her GPS for about a year and did not find any major issues or blank times where her story didn't add up, although it was mainly based on asking where she was going and what she was doing and then comparing it to the GPS location. Once I found out, I was upset and she knew it and I asked her to stop communicating with this person. Later, I found out she had still communicated some with him. He was from her home country, in Japan. The second incident was with someone else. My wife is 43 and has not had much job experience or education and has been working on finding good jobs to add to her resume. She found a job to move to another city five hours away as a Japanese translator. I never encouraged her to do this, but to try not to be too controlling, I did not stop her from doing it. I wish I had been more stern about not wanting her to do it. I visited one week a month, so 25% of the time. It was a six-month contract, and the last half was very strained. I would visit, and she acted very cold and distant, like barely muttering hello when I came in after being away for three weeks. During this time, she had some problems with difficult managers, and there was one guy who helped her deal with the issues. I came to find out she started developing what she describes as a friendship with this guy by meeting for lunch and talking every day and becoming friends. She admitted to visiting his apartment for drinks a few times over the last three months of the contract. He has a roommate. Also, when she moved back from the contract, she had a really weird attitude, like she had lost someone close to her and didn't want to come back home. There is more backstory on why she wanted to move from our current area. We had planned on reevaluating in two years, selling the house, and moving. The next three weeks were very strained, and she was bitter and mean. After three weeks, we started acting like a husband and wife again, having intimate relations. Things seemed to be getting back on track. I had a family trip planned to visit my aging grandfather, who was recently diagnosed with a dementia-type disease. She refused to go with me. She has a strange hang-up about close families because her family growing up was so strained. The trip took place about a month and a week or so after she came back from the out-of-town contract. She asked me several times what dates I would be going. Once I flew down, the day after I arrived visiting family, she called and said she was going back to the town where she worked for six months and was going to stay at a married female friend's house to see more of the people she became friends with. I had put my GPS tracker in the car while I was gone because I thought it was odd how many times she asked what dates I would be gone. I could see the apartment where the car was located most of the time, late at night, all day long, etc. She came back the day after I got home from my trip. 
When she came in, she was on the phone, very cold, with no hello, and ignored me. When she finally got off the phone, I tried talking, just asking how the trip was, how her female friend was, etc. She started getting defensive, and through putting things together and asking the right questions, I backed her into a corner and asked for her friend's house address. The GPS showed her at an apartment complex. She flipped out, called her female friend, and locked herself in the bathroom for 30 minutes. After this, she came out with a house address. The next morning, I questioned her more, and she admitted that she went to stay with this other guy who had helped her deal with issues, and they met for lunch every day to talk. She said he had a roommate, and they just visited, ate out, went jogging, swimming, and watched TV. At that time, she admitted it was an emotional affair. Now, to the biggest crux of the issue, this never sat well with me. So, about two weeks after her admitting to the above, I continued asking strategic questions and putting things together. She eventually admitted that they had intimate relations on the last day of the trip. I don't know if it is relevant, my mind is going crazy. The last month or so, initially finding out she went to stay at a guy's apartment for a four-day trip while I was out of town, and even more devastating, finding out they had intimate relations. But according to what she admitted, it was not planned. They had a few drinks and hugged. It turned into a kiss and some serious groping. Then she took off her pants, asked where the condom was, and he didn't have one. They proceeded to have intimate relations. She soon after told him to stop since he was not using a condom, then tried to give a hand job, which hurt too much, so she stopped, and presumably, he left and took care of it. Three major blows to my mind, admitting to the emotional affair and staying at his apartment, admitting to having intimate relations, and lying about using a condom because it put her at so much risk of pregnancy and disease. Obviously, I have doubts about how involved and frequent the sexual encounters have been. She has lied every step of the way, and only by showing evidence and using logic in conversation, putting missing pieces together, has she admitted to so much. She did immediately email the guy and break off the friendship. You don't proceed to have intimate relations with your friends and claim to have stopped all communication. Oh yeah, the first guy with the texting, while she was on this four-day trip, she met him for dinner since he was going back to Japan. She is pushing to go to individual and marriage counseling. Her attitude goes back and forth from giving up and suggesting we should divorce to showing remorse and wanting to stay married. I asked her if she is willing to take a polygraph test to help verify if she is being honest or still lying, and she said she would take it, although she is not thrilled with the idea. This is the hardest thing I have dealt with in my life. I wouldn't wish this pain on my worst enemy. Maybe because we have such a long history and met at such a young age, I am starting personal therapy sessions next week. I keep going back and forth in my mind. On one side, I always said if there was an affair, I would get divorced in the blink of an eye. Maybe it's because the details came in a little bit at a time, but I am going back and forth and may try marriage counseling to see if there is a chance to reconcile. But I am still not sure if I even want to do this and will just get divorced, assuming she takes a polygraph to verify what happened. Am I just being emotionally deluded to think it was more of an unintentional mistake to have intimate relations? I know this type of thing can happen, or does it really matter if it was a friendship with accidental intimate relations or a year-long physical affair? But even then, there had to be feelings there for it to accidentally happen. She was defensive at first, trying to blame anything and everything but herself, but has started to accept blame and show some humility and remorse, maybe because she realizes how close I am to filing for divorce. I admit my emotions are very heightened, and I am absolutely broken because of this betrayal. Am I being deluded to think it was a one-time unintentional mistake and want to back it up with a polygraph test, or is there a reason to believe this situation is not as bad as finding out long-term? Multiple affairs took place? Either way, intimate relations are intimate relations, even if they last a few seconds, it is still a betrayal. 
She still chose this person over our 22-year relationship and my well-being and happiness. Thinking about the good times in the past and future plans is killing me. I wish there was a way to turn off the pain for a while, just to take a small break. The discovery started a month ago, and each week, new discoveries about the details happen. Please, God, let this be something that gets better and better soon. I am not going to hurt myself or anyone else. I'm not going to sabotage myself with drugs, but I can understand much better now how people get pushed to take extreme actions just to dull the pain. I am so bleeping angry right now, I can't even express it accurately. Why do I still have this hope? Maybe it isn't as bad as other affair disasters. Is it true some cases really aren't as bad and are easier to reconcile, or is the deed the deed, and it doesn't matter if it was a one-time mistake or a multi-year affair? If you love this story and crave more tales of love, betrayal, and healing, don't forget to subscribe for more from Cheating Stories.